Welcome back, everybody, to the second episode of the Flat Hat Podcast for the semester. My name is Ryan Goodman. I will be your host again. And joining me today, we have our new executive team. So last last episode, we interviewed our outgoing exec, kind of had a great conversation about what their time on Flat Hat looked like. And so now we're interviewing our new team, and we're going to talk about current and future experiences, I think, will be kind of the, the theme today. So do you guys just want to go around and introduce yourselves? Just give us, like your name and then your current position and then also like the previous positions you held. So like, how did you get to this point? So my current position, like what I had before? Yes. Okay. So currently I'm the operations coordinator, but I share that title with Emma Henry, who is overseas right now. God bless Emma. We love Emma. Studying (laughs) abroad um, and killing it in New Zealand. Um, And previous to this, I was the standards and practices editor or ombuds editor for two years. And then I was an intern. And then who are you? Oh, I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah <laughs> Devendorf. Hey guys, my name is Ethan Chin. Um, I'm the new managing editor. Uh, I was the sports editor last year. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for what this year has in store. Um, my name is Anna Arnsberger. I am the new editor in chief, and I was formerly the operations coordinator and the news editor. Hi, I'm Agavini. I am the current executive editor, and I was the variety editor, and before that, an intern. Oh, yeah, what are you? Oh, yeah, I guess, so yeah, I'm Ryan. I am also not only the esteemed host, but I am on the exec team. I'm the new digital media editor, which is why you have to deal with me as host now instead of Adam. Before this, I was the photos editor for a long time. I was uh, started as a photos associate, and then I was uh, an intern when I first got here in fall of 2021. So kind of related to that, the first thing I wanted to ask is we've all been on staff for a long time. You know, we've, we've worked our way up through the ranks. We've seen, you know, different people hold these positions and we've seen that this can, you know, we've seen everything that goes along with this position. It can be stressful at times, a lot of work. And so what I want to ask is like, why, why did you guys want, to hold the position you currently have. What what made you want to be on on exec? What was that thing that kind of drove you towards this? So, um, why I wanted to be on exec was just because I, at some point, knew that Flat How was the commitment I've been having consistently since freshman year and is, you know, was the commitment that I found I was most attached to. And I really loved what we were putting out every single week and really felt connected to the people and the content that we were putting out. And as I joined things like Media Council and um, the Pulitzer Center research thing that I'm doing, it's like it became a lot bigger than just Flat Hat. It became something I was really passionate about. So I really wanted to join Exec, but I knew that because I came from a kind of behind the scenes role at the Flat Hat, um, I wanted to continue with that. I really enjoyed it. I was, I've never been the type to really want to produce content every single week. I really wanted to just like support the paper and support my fellow writers and editors and make sure that we're like, you know, a continuously growing and happy community. And I loved the intern program a lot. I was always excited to take interns and take mentees and show up to all the intern lessons. And I thought it would be a natural progression from the previous position I had just because there is so many elements of the intern program that include DEI and ethics and journalistic integrity and how to be a journalist 101 and stuff like that which was stuff that I familiarized myself with over the course of like the three years that I've been in Flat Hat and other media organization activities and internships and whatnot um so I (laughs) Emma and I kind of devised a plan uh, a while back that we wanted to combine our strengths to create an intern program that was not just how to produce content every week, but how to also like be a good journalist and contribute to the paper in other ways that are not just purely what arrives on our website or on the paper. Um, and I'm really happy about that. I'm proud of it. And I've loved my job so far. Yeah, you've been been killing it. You you mentioned you hold this position with um with Emma, and obviously we don't, we don't want to speak for Emma because she's not here. We don't want to like put words in her mouth, but what what was it that made you want to kind of do that role together? Because this has traditionally been mm-hmm. a role that only one person holds, so far as I understand. So what was kind of your drive to to make that into a co-role? Yeah, in recent memory, uh, operations coordinator is for one person and usually someone that studies abroad that first semester so that they can come back and do the intern program that second semester. Yeah. Um, and then that second semester of senior year, no one 
<laughs> is going to be no one no one's as a second semester senior is ever on the paper ever so um that's just kind of how it's been and it's worked out but I was never it was never in the cards for me to study abroad for a whole semester so because of that um I could do the brunt of the work for this semester and then Emma could come the second semester and we could kind of work together so that allowed us to do two intern programs um, which has never been done before, but I think is a really good opportunity. Maybe something that we should continue in the future if people, if people's schedules allow, because um, it just brings more writers into the paper. It gets people more excited. It allows more accessibility of our paper to transfer students, which is always something good to keep in mind. Um, and so, like, that was one element of it. And then also because Emma was studying abroad, Operations Corner was really the only position that she could do, and she's so incredibly talented like the best writer I've ever met ever um and we've always just worked together extremely well ever since we were freshmen and we're also going to be roommates next year so it's just it was just it worked out very very well who wants to take it next I can go um yeah I mean I I've always been um involved in journalism like I was involved in my high school paper like all four years of high school um so it was kind of natural for me to I guess, want to join in the first place um, when I got to William & Mary. And then, um, I don't know, I became so enamored with, like, the community here. Um, I'd say, like, some of the people that, like, I enjoy seeing the most on campus are in the flat hat. And I think for me it was also, like Sarah was saying, like a natural progression from, like, I feel like I, I did all I wanted to do with sports. And, um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to take on more responsibility and, kind of make a larger impact on the paper that uh, I've grown to love. Fantastic. Um, for me, I think I, I talked about this in the last episode too, but um, I also did journalism in high school and it was like natural for me to join this and like become a news editor um, and um, operations coordinator because I was abroad. But um, for like in terms of the decision to become editor in chief, uh, I think like a few months ago I, I was really like I had no idea if I wanted to or not I was really like debating over it um because I think there I love the flathead and I love the community but I also think there have always been a lot of things that I wanted to change a little bit um from like starting when I was an intern and then it took like a lot of decision making for me but I was like well as editor-in-chief like you have I could like be the one to make those changes and I think I've also just like really been realizing like the power that the flathead has as a tool um to, you know, bring attention to important issues um, and just, like, be an important, like, change maker in the community. Um, so I think that's ultimately what encouraged me to become editor-in-chief. Yeah, and for me, like Sarah said, like Ethan said, um, it was quite a bit of just natural progression. I very much enjoyed production nights as a variety editor and... I kind of miss designing pages, too. There is an element of that, but I still get to sit with my peeps with both variety and opinions and bring a lot more of my ideas for opinions than I could have done. Well, we are an open paper. You can always bring suggestions, but really, I have the position now to kind of share my ideas for opinions. You can tell them what to do because you're their <laughs> boss. Well, no, you know, the most interesting thing is I think I have the least number of new editors mm -hmm. Um compared to like Ethan and such. Yeah, so you do have a lot of returning I have people. Miles, I have Molly, I have a V, and they're my friends. So there's an element of just continuing my relationship with them, but also giving them suggestions. And honestly, some of my suggestions are things that they have brought up to me when I was working alongside them. Like a V wanted more to work with with the pages. And so now I can bring Adam in um, with his advice column that he's going to give another rendition of this weekend and things like that just being able to kind of pay it forward and yeah I've loved it so far and I can't wait for the next production night yeah those are all very good answers I think mine would be to kind of echo part of what you guys had said and you know it, it is on some level just the natural progression of where the digital media stuff takes you I knew I wanted to do something else than photos editor again just because photo photos editor could be a lot of very kind of hectic running around all the time work. And it's like, I think I'm ready to do something a little different. So I, I wanted to try, you know, my hand at, at a more editor level position for a, like a higher up editor position. And then I think also part of it was just exploring different avenues of like making stuff. You know, I've been 
there's a, a video that I'm in the in the early stages of, of working on with the videos people that I kind of pitched last semester and it's like oh well now I can actually like take a hand in making that and working with the the people on social media and with graphics and then obviously getting to do this has been has been a ton of fun and so I think yeah for me like I said it's just kind of a matter of getting to to spread my wings a little bit in my last last full year on on staff can I chime in really quickly because I forgot to say something yeah of course um I would also like to give a shout out to Vivian because she's actually a big part of my inspiration for taking on her role I knew that I wanted to do journalism as a high schooler just forward throughout my life um but I I got a lot of support from her um she's a big reason why I've stayed with the paper because I've seen what you can do from a leadership role she was not just our boss she was our mentor she was we called her like in the least weirdest way possible our mother kind of because we were like a little family we did things together um in the exec section so I wanted to fill in those shoes even though I don't think I could completely and she's always you know called me her mini her so um just being able to to follow up with that that's been a big part of it too anything else Jake Forbes love you so I think the next thing I want to ask so like we've all been kind of settled into our positions now for for a couple of weeks so I wanted to ask like you know the the basis of the last question was the idea that we've kind of seen what this is like because we've kind of been observing it for a while to kind of flip that on, flip that on its head has there been anything about your your new position that has been kind of surprising to you like anything you didn't expect be it a responsibility or like a task or just something more general that you didn't expect i think for me there is like so much and i and like i kind of knew that there would be things i didn't know about like eic is like this big like position that just kind of deals with everything but it's sort of just like like literally doing every single logistic thing for the paper um, is not really what you anticipate. And being the flathead, we don't have an advisor. So it's sort of figuring out things sort of on your own. I mean, I've been working so much with Molly, and she's been extremely helpful through the transition, and I feel like she doesn't even have to be because I'm sure some of the former EICs were not this like supportive throughout it, but Molly's always there like answering all of my questions. Um, but just like everything from like, ordering more toner for the printer and like setting up subscriptions for things and like communicating with the print like just so many different things and like it's so much like working like with different people having meetings with all kinds of people constantly um and just like we're like things are coming to my email like every like few minutes so I think it's just like the way that sort of like takes over and I knew it would take over a lot of my life but like the smaller things that you kind of don't think about yeah and I guess for me there's still a whole year left, so I'm sure something will pop up, but either Vivian's prepared me quite a bit, or I was overthinking it, but so far, it seems like the surprising thing is how little mystery there really is behind the position. Um, when I was growing up, there were, like, two different lunch times in elementary school, and when you were in the first one, you would walk away, and the new people would come in, and you'd be like, are they throwing a party while I'm gone type of deal? <laughs> like, you you just, like, think about all this exclusivity and what is going on when I'm gone, right? So I would leave as variety editor, and I'd be like, what types of things does Vivian need to do that I don't know of? Like, what type of... <laughs> and really, I'm looking at the pages now, and I'm doing what she was doing, and it's, it's a lot of common sense, and it's a lot of just using... I guess this is why there's a progression, right? Using what you've learned going up the ranks and so it just it all prepares you and so mm -hmm. um there's just a great deal of just trusting yourself and um yeah it's not as bad or as hard or as like complex or magical as as you might think it's yeah. good advice i was very curious where you were going when you started that story <laughs> about elementary school lunch times but you know what that actually <laughs> made a lot of sense <laughs> I mean, for me, um, in the managing editor role, I think um, not as surprising, but something that I've quickly had to, I guess, learn on the fly is, like, just, like, the news section as a whole. I think, like, you know, the the trajectory of going from sports editor to managing editor is a very difficult transition it's there's a reason why like historically it's always been news 
editor to managing editor um, just because how like you know news is kind of dominates like in terms of uh, content production it's always the front page it's always the know? front page it's oh, it's producing the most content out of any section um, and for me it's kind of just learning a lot of like these nuances about like who is who like you know I learned who Suzanne Clavitt is who Don <laughs> Butler is you know all these all these figures that are really like you know critical to the news like section that you know as a sports editor I had no idea who that was um and just yeah like just learning I mean I'm learning with my news editors of all like the things that we need to cover and you know news like style of editing as well so it's not as I mean I knew I'd have to do it but maybe a little bit surprising like how much there is to learn yeah that's been a big that idea of like learning people has been a big part of that for me or like learning the way that things work like you know before this it, it was very easy to kind of live in my own little photos bubble right of like okay there's x men number of photos i need to get this week once i'm once the picture's taken i don't need to worry about it but now it's learning like the process of okay like this is actually how people in the print sections get the photos this is how the videos are made this is how stuff gets from being on the website to going up on social media this is how the podcast is done this is how the graphics team works like I had real, really no conception of how the rest of these sections operated. And so it was definitely the first couple of weeks, a lot of like meeting with people and being like, okay, I know I'm your boss now technically, but I need you to literally explain your job to me. Like I am a toddler. Cause I have no idea. Like I didn't know what the pipeline for graphics looked like. I didn't know how to do a podcast setup. Like this is all very new to me. So yeah, it's been a lot of kind of learning on the fly for the first few weeks. Hmm. I think for me, I didn't realize how structurally different operations coordinator is from anything on the paper, but let alone, like, the position I had before. Um, Just because, like, with standards and practices, I was establishing precedent. And with the operations coordinator position, I had so much to go off of in terms of, like, aiding the scheduling for the entirety of the semester, um, for all the lessons what the subject for each lesson would be, what projects should look like, the kind of, like, weekly tasks for me were already very established. Um, And so then that was good just because I have to now just work off of, like, my own communication abilities and, like, work ethic and making sure that every intern is taken care of um, while factoring in, like, all my other, like, responsibilities. But, like, with ombuds, it was very much it was such an independent position I had for so long and like there was really no one to help besides like it was like Molly and I trying to figure out stuff um and it was like such a rewarding experience because I feel like I got to like make so many decisions about how the paper should deal with certain crises um and I'll always like value so much of like that experience that I had with like crisis management and communication and learning about every single section and how every single section operated I feel like that really like aided in my transition to operations because now I feel like I can speak for every section and like tell you about what they do on the weekly um and so they're extremely different but at the same time there's a lot of like transferable skills in terms of like education and teaching my fellow peers on staff about you know how to get through the week and how to deal with uh, when when things come up, when conflict arises. Yeah, for sure. So it definitely seems like a kind of a running theme there of like taking the experiences that have kind of we've built up over the past, you know, two to three years on staff and applying them to to these new roles. And I guess sort of building off of that, so like last semester, obviously at the end of the semester, we had our, our EIC caucus where we all kind of went around and talked about like, okay, who are we going to elect what are the big kind of issues that we want to see solved over the course of the next year and then when we all applied for our positions we had to fill out a form where we kind of talked about like what are some ideas that we would have to bring to the role and so the third thing I was I was kind of wondering for you guys is like is there any sort of number one goal you know like a kind of a a north star this guiding light that brought you into the position of like this is this is something I want to be different this is something I want to change this is something I want to fix or is it more like a bunch of little things or what was, what's, what's something you want to kind of see 
changed on the paper, I guess, is the, the simple way to put the question. I think for me, this was especially important for my application process. This was something that I definitely knew I needed to have, like a unifying thing. And something that I wrote in there, like as a paragraph topic sentence before listing all my ideas mm -hmm. was, I just want to connect the paper more to the community um, and increase engagement more. Because something that my father once said when I was coming back home from production night at like one in the morning was, who reads your paper? <laughs> he was like, Gavin, you work so hard on this. I want to ask you, like, who is who is benefiting from your work, right? And so I think a big part of the reward is, yes, growing as a journalist and everything, but you really do want to feel like you're helping other people and to have them appreciate your work too. And so um, whether it be having more preemptive articles for Variety um, going forward so that we have more timely articles so people can actually feel like the paper responds to what's going on in real time or whether it's advice columns that you can directly solicit as a person or more op-ed opportunities so that you can feel like you're actually a part of the paper even though you're not on staff or just distributing on the terrace we're going to hopefully start that as a paper um, to just actively engage with the community I feel like that will just I mean that's what a newspaper is right we're not we're not this like removed thing we're supposed to be a tool for the people who surround us and so um, tapping into that is definitely a big goal for me and I think for a lot of us here. Yeah, that was definitely a, a theme that I remember was echoed a lot is that idea of being more in touch with, you know, the other people on, with everybody else who's on campus. That kind of goes into mine. Um, for me, the biggest thing is also, like, connecting with the community and covering the community. Um, I think we don't have a great relationship with a lot of different groups on campus, and I think there's a lot of good reason for that. Historically, we've, I mean, what, we're 114 years old. We have not always been on the right side of history with that, and um, I think the power that we have as the Flathead is that we're the student newspaper. We're not WM News. We're not, like, you can go to WM News, find anything you want about BOV, like, all the institutional stuff, but, like, the stories of the people, the mm -hmm. students, the people on the in the community, just the more grassroots focus is not going to be told by anyone but us. And I really, right. really wanted to emphasize that. Um, I wanted to expand our coverage of diverse groups um, and just create better relationships with them because, like, it's our job to represent them. And also this goes into what a, gov a governor is saying about, um, like, readership and, like, having our voices actually matter. Like, for me, at least, I think some of the most impactful articles I've ever written are the ones about, like, student protests or like like workers organizing things like that which are like stories that aren't going to get co covered by anyone else but also they're really impactful and they can actually like produce change when we write them and when you write them like the people who you work with are always so grateful and it kind of like breaks news that wouldn't otherwise be broken and mm -hmm. so I really really want to put an emphasis on that and it's not like something you can just do overnight like we're all not even like the most diverse staff um, and we do have all these, like, historical, like, challenges and tensions, and so, like, it's just going to be a slow process of at least, I hope, like, by the time I leave, we can at least, like, better some of the relationships and, you know, create a new framework for, like, what our focus is as a paper. Uh, I guess I can go next. Um, McGovney and Anna touched upon, you know, stuff that I wanted to say about, like, the role the paper has on campus, so I talk about the other thing that I, emph that I emphasized in my application. Um... My application was like it was a nightmare to read. I'm sorry, Anna. It was like I think it was like like the the managing editor like prompt was like, please respond in one paragraph. Mine was like five paragraphs, like I did not respond words. in one paragraph. Mine I don't was think a little any long. Of us did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyways, I think I think I like I had, there's like a lot of like technical things for each section that I talked about, but the main thing that I want to like bring up and like I want to try to prioritize this year is like community, like not. On school, like not in terms of the campus, but like community within the paper. I think that's something that, especially last year, was like a little bit at times um, lacking because I don't know. I, for example, I've I've talked to people who said last year that like 
they would go to staff meeting and then like somebody across the room, they had no idea what their name was. And this was like at the end of the year. Um, and I just think that that's doing a disservice to our potential because I mean, like outside of just like just the bare minimum of knowing, you know, who you're in an organization with, but just like, I feel like collaboration uh, is, is, that's the word I'm trying to think of. Collaboration suffers when you don't even know like who's across the room from each other. Um, so I think that's like, you know, what Agavni and Tiger are doing with like social events, I think is great. Um, but also just like, also, um, I feel like there's a little bit of an inner circle with the section editors, uh, the editorial board, like an exec, because they spend, we just sp spend so much time together. Mm -hmm. And I think including a SOX into that and interns, I think is so important in continuing to foster like more unity and more community within our own organization yeah i'm i pulled up my application because it's this thing is so long this thing is so long guys um but yeah so i'm looking at it um we emma and i i personally had like a notes app that i was working on like since for i got it, it must have been a year or so like writing down ideas for what i could see for the operations um position and for the intern program and there were a couple like key touchstones that like I knew I needed to like that Emma and I like really wanted to emphasize because like the general like bones of the intern program are pretty s substantial um and there's certain like lessons that are staples like the introduction to journalism and DEI and ethics and uh, you know people of course, like, uh, the interns get to engage with their section of interest, like, do projects and stuff like that. Um, so, like, we wanted to keep the general bones of it the same, but we wanted to, like, add in some things we felt were, could be, you know, could fill some gaps. And so, one of those that I was really passionate about was highlighting all sections in the intern program. And we, like, manifested that with things like the section symposium, as opposed to, you know, just, like, general presentations or interns having to, like, go seek out their, what they really wanted to do for the paper um, is every, every section needed to be included, not just the writing sections. Um, and so now we have like interns interested in the business section, for example, which is amazing. And, uh, you know, graphics and all like standards and practices and the things like that, that I feel like really make up so much of the paper and go so unrecognized and unnoticed. The less obvious stuff that you yeah. don't immediately think of when you think, oh, student newspaper you know so what i'll just write articles like no there's exactly. a lot of stuff behind the scenes that is needed to make everything function as uh, as it should absolutely it's 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 that was one of the things that i really wanted to emphasize and also we wanted to make the intern program more dynamic less like a classroom focus uh we want we're wanting to implement some a field trip uh, to special collections where we can look at old flat hats because i don't know if people know but like Special Collections in the SWEM has every single flat hat issue. Basically, I don't know how far going back, but it's really flat hat's like a really important record for school. What's happening every week in the school? Our print edition is in incredibly important um, for just like general like what's going on with William and Mary. And so we wanted to like make sure that interns had access to that and knew what they looked like to understand like what flat hat is and how important it can be for historical record. And then we also like want to implement another field trip. This we're gonna we're gonna, this is gonna happen, guys. We're gonna try and figure it out. We want to take some interns to DC to talk with some flat hat alums who now work in media, um, generally, and hopefully collaborate with like the uh, Washington Center um, to do that or the Cohen Career Center. But we'll see what happens. Um, and then, yeah, I think the like overall though, like the majority of like. The thesis, I guess, that, like, Emma and I really wanted to, like, tackle was lifting up voices, voices of our writers, voices of people that we wanted to cover, making sure that people are covered respectfully, and, you know, talking to a source is such a gift, and people give themselves so much to our paper all the time, and we're so grateful for that, and so every... I think that just in our conduct and the way that we want to do the intern program, we're hoping to, like, train writers that go into journalism in the general William Mary campus, Williamsburg area with like that type of integrity. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of, a lot of really, really interesting stuff. The end of the bit about like, um, you know, writing stories that 
have an impact on kind of the importance of it. It just made me think of how um, if you Google like William and Mary dining workers or something, I'm pretty sure your article is the first thing that comes up if you go on like Google Images. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like to what Sarah was saying, like not to toot our own horn too much, but like, yeah, we've been around for over a hundred years. Like this is an important historical record of, of what happened. So I think all your guys' points of like making sure that we cover these uh these organizations and these people and these voices that like yeah aren't going to get included on wm news or on the school's official website and if like how else are those voices going to kind of get preserved like to know that these people were here and what they were saying and what they were doing at this time i think that's all really important i think it's been really inspirational to kind of see you guys spearheading that i guess my goals aren't as uh they're not as hefty but i think mine was was very much just that um we have a lot of talent within the digital media kind of departments, but I think for a little while, the digital media umbrella has been a little disorganized to say there hasn't been a ton of collaboration, like between those sections and then between all of our sections and the print ones. And so I think my main goal has just been facilitating like more collaboration, like I said, between the digital media sections, more collaboration between us and print and just making sure that we're all kind of, the people are aware of like what we're doing, you know, that we're posting more on social media, that we are advertising the podcast, bringing back the photo series, doing more like kind of long form, not like full on documentary, but you know, more in depth video coverage of stuff, streamlining the graphics process, just to make sure that again, we can kind of best support the goals that you guys all have of, of uplifting these voices and kind of making a, a historical record that is maybe a little nicer to look at, maybe a little a little more organized and maybe a little more kind of diverse in the way that we cover these things that we can cover them through an article or a video or a photo series or a podcast interview. There's a lot of different ways that we can kind of keep these voices around. And I think that's important as, you know, more and more stuff is going online to have a strong, a strong digital media presence. And I guess on that note, the last question, not as, as in depth as uh, the rest of these, but just a general one of like, do you guys feel confident in where we're, where are we going as a paper? Are we are we heading towards a, a a brighter a brighter future for the flat hat? I can say no. Gosh, <laughs> can't. Can't. I got me, fourteen. Can... Good run. Yeah, I've heard. Not gonna name names, but I've heard you guys should know. Um, people say that they really like our exec board for this um, for this for this coming year. Um, I think everybody they already says see, that. No, but they already see, like, improvements. Talk to people on the street. And, They're saying it. <laughs> and, uh, and just feel like like we're going in a good direction. And it's, you know that something's good when people, like, are going out of their way to say it's good. And it's not just you. I have actually noticed kind of that with, like, even just looking at the digital media stuff. I remember we did a, just a video a few weeks ago about Marketplace and the way that things have been kind of changing there. And then we, we started a bit of discourse on a Yik Yak about that. Of people like, I didn't know that things were were at this state. Or like seeing friends of mine talk about articles we write because we're posting more on, on Instagram. I saw a lot of people talking about um Vivian's Stanley Cup article mm-hmm. that seemed to, to r- maybe not ruffle a few feathers, but that got people's attention. And see, so yeah, I think to your point, like I've already noticed a little bit, like trying to place myself in the shoes of an outside observer, like I have seen us more kind of, our presence, I feel like, has been felt a little bit more, even just a few weeks in, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that people are, like I don't like I hear what you guys are saying, and I think I I agree with you, but I also don't fully know, so I'm not going to be like tooting my own horn because I don't I don't know I don't know about that, but I have a lot of hope for us because I think we have so many ideas on this exact team and even beyond the exact team. I think there's a lot of passion and there's a lot of a lot of room for us to like do big things, do new things. I think right now the challenge is, you know, getting everyone transition and we're getting more used to it, but like the focus is like on getting like comfortable. Um, and I'm just really excited for like the time when like we, we get there and we can start working on bigger things. And I was thinking about this earlier and I think it's just really cool to be in sort of an, inst- like um, an organization like this. And I was thinking about how like, you know, every year it just gets better because every year, you know, we have this big established system for things, but every year, once you get used to that, you have the ability to change it a little bit and make it a little bit better. So I just, I, I have hope that um, we can make improvements as has been done for a hundred plus years. You know, it's like what Isaac Newton said about... <laughs> she has the <laughs> about, funniest about anecdotes. standing on the shoulders of giants. 
we're like a <laughs> we're like we're like this tower, right? Mm-hmm. And like the Tower of Pisa, like we're old, but we're not falling over to the ground. We are instead just. It is leaning though. <laughs> yes, it, it but, is a little tilted. But it keeps going, right? And so that kind of reflects how it's not an easy road, but we continue, and we like what Anna said, we build off, and and we keep getting taller and taller. I don't think the Tower of Pizza keeps getting taller, but I love the energy. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I am just eternally extremely pr- proud of the flat hat. Um, I think that the flat hat just brings in extremely passionate, talented, really highly competent people. And, like, obviously, like, William & Mary is, like, filled with them. Um, but, like, people that want to work for the flat hat really care I think about the work that they do because you can see it like you can see the product every week and so you constantly want to make it better and constantly make you think of more creative ideas or a better way of doing articles or talking to this source or covering this story and that's really special um I yeah I just I'm I'm like yeah I'm just like eternally just like so proud of the work that we do and doing the intern program now and being being able to like foster like new writers um obviously not everybody sticks with the flat hat not everybody makes it all the way through but i think that everybody has a pretty positive experience with whatever they contribute to flat hat big or small whatever section um we're a pretty well established pretty big organization um and there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of te- technical things to learn and there's so much to kind of get a grasp on but you know, like we're we're still chugging along, and like everybody, every like every intern cycle, there's so many talented, passionate people. I never did journalism prior to college, so I can't like con- compare this experience really to any other experience. But I can like say that, like even with the establishment of like the standards and practices editor, which only came a semester maybe before I took it over, um, and like having to like put together all the parts and like create that position and create that section basically from like almost nothing like it shows how we're continuously looking for like how to improve this paper and how to bring in those marginalized voices and how to make sure that everyone is feeling supported and taken care of how to you know like even Jake like Jake Forbes will go on and on about how important burnout awareness is for people in the flat hat because we give our all to it and we you know I consider everyone here like extremely close friends. Um, I find the paper to be a really welcoming, supportive place. Um, and I'm, yeah, it's like the number one thing on my resume. I'm obsessed with it. I love the paper. Um, I share a similar sentiment where I think like the, our exec board is like extremely talented. Um, I think me personally, I, I do suffer from a little bit of imposter syndrome still just because, I don't know, I like my three closest friends on the flat hat were Molly, Jake, and Vivian. So it's just kind of like seeing, I got like really, you know, close look at how, I guess, good they were at their jobs. So it's like kind of having them on that pedestal. I'm trying to figure out how to get to that point. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I think like we, the thing that I think we have going for us is that we are all coming into this with like fresh ideas. I, I mean, I, I was listening to um, the podcast last the last podcast with the outgoing exec and Anna was talking about our first exec meeting where like it was not supposed to be like an hour and a half, but it was Mm -hmm. because we just had so many ideas. And I think that, I don't know, I think every single person on this exec right now is like, I think they're going to work so extremely hard that we just can't fail. So (laughs) we're too big to fail. You heard it here first. I know. I think there's something to it. Cause like, I mean, clubs at William and Mary kind of go away if the wrong person graduates and I've never had that feeling about flat hat. I think there's always going to be really talented, passionate freshmen that want to write for their school paper. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't have really much else to to add to that. I think a lot of very positive sentiments and I, I agree with all of that. So I think that's a a great uplifting note to end, uh, to end this, this week's episode on. Thank you all for watching.